geez. Oh, geez. He went from not worked up at all to completely wound up. Wound in about up. Like two a yo yo <laughs> that has been wound up. Not like one where the strings just hanging. Not, uh-huh. not, not, not that kind of yo yo. But the one that's Hold actually on. moving. Someone's calling me. It's Oops. actually moving. Oh, it's my buddy. Oh. Well, not going to take his Sorry, call right we're now. doing the Sorry, show right buddy. now. Shout out to O'Day who just called me during the show. <laughs> okay. So. We got a show for you today that is a show. It's probably going to be about 10 to so minutes long. Um, really? It's pretty awesome. It's got, it's got five tips to make you a better professional. And for the record, if you guys don't like this show, I didn't write it at all. And if you like it, then you got to give the accolades to Craig because I didn't write this one at all. Sorry. Okay. All right. You make fun of me for that all the time. So this time it's actually true. You actually wrote the show all by yourself. Oh, come on. If we've done, how many shows do you think you have written yourself without my assistance? A few. All right. All right. All right. If you had to give a few a number, what number would you identify that as? I think the definition of a few is like three. Okay. 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 And and first of all, I think you've probably written more than just three shows. Never know. But But I would say it's less than ten. (laughs) <laughs> all right, we can agree on that, right? Probably. You know where I'm going with this already, right? I'm yeah. pretty transparent in what I do. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, and we've done this as what, our third, and this is, this is we are in our fourth yeah. year doing this. Yeah, we are this, in our fourth year, yes. And we pretty much do one show a week. So yep. let's just say we do 50 shows a year, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. So out of 150 plus, so when we started in June. I don't think we need so an exact 150, number. 150, hey, you know, we're approaching we're not approaching 200 shows yet, but we're over uh, we're over 150 <sighs> shows, and you have written less than 10. But so, we should figure out when our 200th show is and do some kind of you know woohoo kind of okay. thing. Yeah, that'd all be right. awesome. Um, you know, because I write all the shows, most Whatever. of them. Whatever. Uh, I'll feel free to let you handle that part, and you can count <laughs> it all up. So, anyway, let's get back to the to the task at hand. John likes when I clap. Clapping it up. No. Nope. Oh, I added snaps. Yeah, you did add snaps to that. And a point. <laughs> All right. So we got that going what for us. What movie is that from? Like, don't they point like that in a movie or well, something? Well, Shooter McGavin in, uh, uh, in uh, Happy yeah, Gilmore. Yeah, yeah. Shout That's out true. to Shooter McGavin <laughs> from Happy Gilmore. Speaking of Happy Gilmore, golf stuff Friday. Oh, we got today. golf going on Friday. Today. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, today. Yeah. yeah that's. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why we might not be live commenting uh, right now is because we are at the Ganier Golf Outing. Yes. Which. Ironically, I don't know if you just did that on purpose, but that was a brilliant segue to our number five. To make you a better professional in this business, I would recommend getting involved with your local board of directors or or your local real estate board. Yes. You know, uh, you know, here in Northwest Indiana, we have Ganire. They're fantastic. Uh, I've served on the board. I've been president on the board. I've done all these things. You know, after a certain time building my career and doing all that stuff, I wanted to give back to the career in which I love so much and serving on the board it is a volunteer board so you do not get paid um if you serve as like president or an officer or something you do have some perks like you can go to um the nar annual conference that's you know travels the country and stuff like that that's always fun to do the iar stuff down in indianapolis is fantastic and not only do you get good networking opportunities like with indiana you know you might have people moving to other parts of the state you can network with them uh, it's good to know other brokers throughout the state, and then same thing nationally. You know, you might have you might have a client that's selling their property here and moving to Florida or something like that. Yeah, it's good to have a good referral agent that you know that you've met and and talked to and things like that to refer to. Okay. So that's is it my turn? Five, I was going to say, is it my yeah. turn to talk a little bit? Good lord. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you had plenty of opportunity. Anyway, go ahead. So he's been on the board for a really long time. I just started doing some stuff with Ganiar a couple years ago, and I kind of dragged some of my friends into helping me kind of at that point. So I'm the um, chair for member benefits committee. So I have to say, like, it was a little intimidating at first, um, especially coming in. I was actually, I guess this is my third year, because I was actually a member of member benefits, and then the next year I chaired it. But I think it's just... It's interesting to see how things work behind the scenes. Um, And like Craig said, I know a lot more people now, which I think helps you when you're doing deals or whatever, because you at least kind of met somebody and are at least familiar with their name and all that kind of good stuff. So getting involved, whether it's committees, the board, whatever, um, I think is a good idea. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hanson. Number four. Go ahead. You got this one. 
no negative talk about other agents. Don't do it. Oh. Come on, guys. Yeah. We all know. We all don't get along. We have personality differences, just like clients and other things. Sometimes it just doesn't work, but we should always just at least be professional, you know, and find other realtors from other companies that you enjoy spending some time with. Good yeah. networking, crossover, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I would add to that. Besides the obvious, like don't talk bad about other realtors, um, you know, ever. You know, one at the ethics violation also by the way but also don't don't do it to your clients either i mean it doesn't make the industry look good as a whole if you're busy telling your client that oh the other agent is very difficult to work with or or whatever i mean it just it adds it adds negativity to the transaction it's just I don't emotional know, it's negativity too yeah yeah which we all know we have to keep emotions at bay like in real estate it's yeah. very hard but that's our job Be better i mean if you went to your doctor and your doctor is like you know your doctor went sent you to another specialist and then that specialist is like oh your doctor sucks like <laughs> you know oh it's so difficult to deal with your doctor he, you know he splints uh broken fractures wrong or something. <laughs> i don't know what else doctors do i don't know uh so anyway, but yeah, I don't know what else doctors do. Really, <laughs> I don't. I have no idea what doctors do. <laughs> it boggles my mind what these men wearing white jackets do. I don't know. They have a stethoscope. It's because you don't. Uh, it's they look you don't in like my going ears. Going to the doctor. That's why. That's so. right. I can't tell. I'm He's like, like in they, denial. They give me a lollipop. Like the last time I was at a doctor, <laughs> a I was like six or something. You know. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. Okay. So no negative talk. It's pretty obvious, right? Yeah, I talk behind so. other agents' backs. It gets back to them, and trust me, I've done it, and it's gotten back to me <laughs> a million times. And I th hope I don't do it ever again. Yeah. Um, and and I will tell you what, I have called the agents that I've talked bad about in the past and apologized to them and things like that. All of them, you know, there's only like one or two that I really just don't don't see eye to eye with. But other yeah. than that, most all the realtors, their hearts are in the right place. You know, we have such a cool industry where we're trying to help others. Yes. You know, so I like it. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Number three? Yeah. Think we're there? Yeah. Number three, my number three tip for you guys, and I think we've actually touched on this before, but to be a better professional, it's it's good to be involved with your board of realtors. It's good not to talk bad about your, your competitors and your colleagues in the business, but also you should be networking. You know, there are tons of networking events. There's tons of mortgage and title and uh, insurance agents that do networking events consistently and sometimes constantly go to them every once in a while get to know some of your fellow realtors and and you know it trust me it helps especially during this multiple offer thing yes unfortunately i know a lot of agents that are like struggling a little bit and they're having a hard time getting offers accepted but the ones that know the other realtor i mean i've had deals of mine accepted for slightly less than other agents offers only because that agent knows oh craig's you know it's good to do a deal with craig you know, he always, you know, he stays in touch with his lender, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think networking, especially if you're newer or even if you've been around for a while and you don't get out there at all, I think networking is a good idea. Like yeah. a lot of vendors hold events, whether it be lenders, grand openings of other agencies, whatever. You know, we just... Broker open houses. Yeah, broker open yeah. houses, stuff like that. And honestly, like... For me, that's like probably, if I had to go by myself, it'd be like the worst social situation ever because I don't know who's coming. And for me, I'm like, oh my God. Even now, like if I did that today, I would still be like that. But it's a lot better because I know a lot of people and you guys have to remember we're salespeople and we like to talk. So nine times out of 10, you're gonna find somebody who's just gonna start gabbing at you and you're gonna be able to make a new connection, so. Oh, and spoiler alert, guess what your realtor friends don't wanna talk about? Do you know this one? What? Any current deals oh yeah that's true <laughs> anything but work <laughs> yeah for the record yeah we all have appraisal issues we all have drama with uh, you know uh well appraisal issues inspection issues stuff yeah like whatever that. it is but yeah. yeah yeah anything and, outside of work and we don't want to hear about it we don't want to hear about it anymore <laughs> i'm so i stop i i got a, a close friend that I've, I've known for a long time and and you know that's what we'll say like hey hey everything going on not work related because we don't like we're good, you know. We've seen every problem. We, you know, well, actually, no. Every problem is different. It's it's the craziest thing. They're all similar sometimes. I feel but like I'm getting electrocuted by this. I hear it. I hear it like making noise. Is something you shocking that? you? No. No, but I thought I heard something crunchy. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So we See? got that going I heard it for again. us. What the heck? Okay. I've never heard that before. I don't I, know. I'm hearing nothing. Not right now. This second, but. All right, well, let's right. just go anyway. networking. Everyone gets it, right? Yeah. Network. Okay, so number two, 
listen to audiobooks. Like I, I always think everyone should be constantly learning, you know, and I hate to say this, but I'm just going to go on a limb and say CE is pointless. It's a dumb thing. Uh, there's never any new stuff. Uh, code of ethics training has been the same for a million years. We're going to have to disagree on this. <laughs> there are. I knew it. Like three years ago, what was that, that dam training that we had? Like if you have a dam in the river that's on the property, whatever, there was some of that. I might not remember exactly what it was, but at least I know that, hey, if there's a dam on the property, maybe I should kind of look into that a little bit farther, right? So mm -hmm. there are different things. They have tried to mix it up, at least on RECP.org, they've tried to. Well, yeah, yeah, and I do, and don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously we all have to do our CE and yep. I, I get mine done every year, but most of it's the same. I don't even pay attention to it half the time anymore. I just take the test. You know, if you've done the test, I take the test in two different states every year. You know, so yeah, it's, I, I, I'm not taking any, I'm not getting any new information, however, it does um, remind you of your vocabulary. Yeah. Like you do have to remember your vocabulary once in a while and the CE, like I've failed well, my one CE class because of that. And my I had to redo it, but. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I get it. I mean, my, and my point for number two is like, hey, when you listen to audio books in the, in your, when you're driving to showings and or stuff like that. Or podcasts. Or podcast. Yeah, I, yeah, I listen like to my, uh, I listen to Audible app or whatever, which is not a sponsor, but we'd love for them to sponsor us. <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, I listen to them and I just listen to books that I think will help me in my career um, or sometimes mental health. Just I make myself read a fiction book or listen to a fiction book every year so I can. See, now I'm a fiction book person. Like I cannot do biographies and all these other books, but I actually did finally listen to a book, an audio book that I was tr really struggling with. I was in the middle of it and I just could not read it. I finally did do an audible and actually listen to it and it made it so much faster because like I read super fast so my brain processes it faster so you can put it on like one times two times 1.8 whatever it is so I finally found my sweet spot at like 1.8 and I was like oh this is kind of cool because it you don't have to I think when you think of audiobooks you think of like hi this is Sam he went and whatever you know what I mean but for those of us that think Maybe that's what you were thinking <laughs> like for those of you that do read faster or process faster the audiobook is a good option because you can do that which i didn't know until i just did that last book so yeah so i i know that's slightly hypocritical when i'm saying hey ce is boring uh, but i listen to audiobooks all the time of the same topics we do in ce but it, it's newer stuff usually and stuff like that so sales books how to get along with people you know managing emotions all of those things you know play into our job so being as educated as you can is helpful yeah i will say our local board when some when we do like purchase agreement trainings and stuff like that those are i think invaluable ce's like yeah. i really do think those are great um i'm just saying the normal stuff that we have to do yeah you know, i always argue with uh the iar staff person for the grievance committees and professional standards and like, you know, you're either an ethical agent or you're not, you know, and no one's like unethical comes into the business and, and takes a CE class on code of ethics and like, you know what, I'm going to give this ethics thing a try. I'm going to give this doing it the right way a try. You know, like I, I don't, I don't believe that that's ever happened. I think some people are just like, you know, now they're either good or bad to start <laughs> with, I guess. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, okay, so now we're going to move on. Besides that, I also think a, a bonus a bonus tip you're getting you're getting six tips today one is also uh, physical health you know go walk go to the gym um like you're reading a book that's like a mental health thing too yeah. you know like if you're reading like a, a fiction book or something our job is super stressful i mean like i got a massage yesterday i went for a walk yesterday i read a book yesterday like you have to do something to decompress your stress like there there is no you can't just keep going and not do anything to relieve stress because you will implode so Figuring out what you can do to reduce that is awesome. Yeah, the number of realtors that implode every year, it's its staggering. We really need to stop realtor implosion. It is. <laughs> Hashtag stop the implosion. I like that. All right. All right. So, okay, our number one tip so we can let you get out of here and have enjoy your awesome weekend. This is a tip that helped me become better at pricing properties uh, when I first got started in the business. You know, two things my original first broker taught me Jerry Berry, shout out to Jerry down in North Carolina. Um, first thing you got to do is you got to know the contract. So read and, and whatever, listen to your managing broker, you know, whatever. Um, but you got to know the contract. You should read every line of that. You should know what every paragraph is. You don't have to know it in order, but you should be able to articulate what that paragraph means to your client 
you know, I think just I'm, reading contracts in general. I mean, we have a lot of forms that we've been using that are not standard here recently. And a lot of people, I can tell, don't know what the addendums mean, don't know what yep. those kind of things are. So really reading the forms, and if you don't understand it, asking your managing broker um, yep. what the what it means is uh, a good thing. Yeah, ask your managing broker. I guarantee they know. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay. So if, let's say now you know the contract. You're healthy. You're walking. You're eating healthy. You're networking. You're not talking bad about other agents behind their backs. You're involved with the board of realtors now. The only other thing you need to know how to do is price properties and. There's the best way to do this that I found is I would take properties that were, let's say they were active and I walked through them. Let's say I showed them to a buyer or, or let's say I, I walked through it as a potential listing and let's say I even lost the listing, but they went with another agent because uh, let's say they priced them differently than I did. I do a CMA on that property and I know, I look at where I would have priced it or what I really think it's, it's worth. Yeah. Then I, I add that to my little showing car or my cart in uh, in the what whatever that is the MLS. Yeah. <laughs> what what is that? What is that contraption with that all we the use every properties day? We have for sale. <laughs> I believe it's an acronym. <laughs> but anyway, uh, do CMAs, you know, and then you could check your you could check how accurate you were afterwards. And if you were off, figure out how you're off, you know. And then the more you do that, the better you'll get. The more confident you'll get with pricing. And no matter, you could be a brand new agent, but if you know that contract and every word that's on it, and you know that property values in that in that area that let's say you're doing a listing presentation in, you'll never be a rookie, you know. And you'll stop getting asked the question, "How long you been in the business?" That's that's the kiss of death. It when, is. When, I hate that. When a, a well, I listing, used to hate it when I was new, anyway. Yeah. When a, when a potential seller asks you that, it's it's usually it's a, you have not won them over yet. Yeah. It's a qualifier. Yeah. So you know, I think the CMA thing that is. You know, to this day, like sometimes I'll still say, hey, Craig, can you check this property for me? Because I, you know, I want to make sure I'm right on my evaluation. Um, so, I hate when you ask me that now. I know. Because you, you, it's normally you a know, hard it, It's a tough one. Yeah. It's <laughs> like when you're getting them, I'm like, and I have to be like, I have to shine, you know? So I got to like, I got to come up with a number and I'm looking, I'm like, oh, man. And it's not like, it's not like you know, I will get one. I'll have agents coming to me and there'll be like four or five properties. I'm like, Really? Like it's an unincorporated, it's the only house within like five miles, it's, it has land and nobody else does. I mean, just like crazy stuff. So having a partner, a mentor, somebody that you can run that stuff off of who has been in the business longer is really advantageous. I know they do do, um, we do pricing classes and stuff, don't we? I would think with the MLS, like CMAs and stuff. No. No, none of that? No, because you know what? The board is always very uh, careful about stepping on managing broker's toes. Okay. So, so you ask know, your managing broker, yeah, give a class, talk to your you know, yeah. and see if they can help you with that. And the more you do it, like Craig said, the better you're going to get. Um, but it takes a minute and don't be intimidated by it. A lot of people are intimidated by doing CMAs. You know, if you run it by somebody and you've done it and done it and done it and done it, you know, that's that's, that's the best way to do it. That's scary, though. Intimidated by a CMA. That'd they be like are. someone at McDonald's, like intimidated by making fries. Like that's that's part of what you're going to do every day. I know. But list like people that uh, actual CMA where people have to do like the listing, they are they kind of freak out about it where you're setting the price, doing that stuff. Comps for, you know, somebody that's already yeah. priced it. That's a little less stressful, I think. But yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. So tell us what you think. Give us one of your tips. What do you what do you think we should have included on here? To make, to make someone a better professional. Yeah, I think that probably varies across the board what people think. Yeah. But I think in general, these are really good tips to get out there, get to know people, you know, doing the CMA, just kind of bringing yourself to that next level of professionalism that we're all trying to get back to here. Yep, excellent. I think that's all I got for them. That's all we got. What we'll let you know you? how the golf outing went next week, guys. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure I'll hit every ball that is on there. <laughs> This is yep. only my second time golfing. Yes, you did. You did have the only pink balls that we saw last I time. I did. Yeah. It was the yeah. last box at Dick's. So I wanted to be able to find my ball. It was. It was the last ah. box of pink balls at Dick's. Good thing we Sporting's do a family good. friendly show here. Sporting goods. I already knew what I meant. Anyway, I I know. I'm just saying. I can't make all the jokes that I want to make right now. Uh huh. Exactly. All right, guys. Uh, looking Thank forward you. to seeing you guys next week. And thanks for watching as usual. See you then. Bye. Right. Bye, everyone.